Roy, in trying to understand the essence of free will, what are some of its components, or how can we dig into this? It's not a unified concept. Well, um, when people write about free will or speak about it. There's several different things. There's self-control, changing your behavior to fit uh, rules and standards. There's rational choice. Can you figure out the right thing to do uh, and then do it? I mean, being able to just being able to think rationally isn't enough. You need at least uh, enough free will to, to do what you figured out is the best thing to do. Um, maybe initiative, uh, taking action yourself rather than letting things happen to you. Uh, possibly planning, uh, making you know, making ideas about what should happen in the future, and then uh, and then following and then sticking to the plan and carrying out the plan. So, uh, to me, the essence of free will is this new way of controlling behavior uh, and being able to import the conscious processing and the, the cultural meanings uh, into the control of action. That's a uh, that's an exciting new development uh, that sets, again, sets humans apart from uh, most other animals. So there are two ways I can begin to understand this. One is I can look at each of those components, uh, uh, self-control, decision-making, which are real things that we, we can do, and say that, well, free will is a generalized construct that I, the human mind, is reading into these things, and now I'm building this thing called free will, but it's really sort of a generalization of these other really specific things. The other way I can look at free will is, is free will is something real, that's something existent, that's something fundamental to human beings, that it is itself expressed through self-control, through rational thought, etc. Those are two different ways of looking at it. Do um, you think one's more legitimate than the other? Well, uh, I, I, there are common processes involved in all these things, and so uh, in that sense there is a core common phenomenon. It's not we call self-control free will, we call rational choice free will, we call mm -hmm. planning free will, um, even though they don't have anything to do with each other. Uh, in my research, we find that after people do one, they do worse at any of the others. So doing one sort of uses up this common limited energy supply and, and willpower, uh, the folk term, uh, seems uh, quite relevant in these cases. They use up their willpower doing self-control and then their decision making is impaired. Or the other way around, they make a bunch of decisions, then their self-control is, uh, is bad on other... What's a specific experiment along those lines? That sounds fascinating. Um, well, uh, some experiments that uh, Kathleen Voss and I published a couple of years ago, we had people make a series of decisions about consumer projects, which would you like to have if you could have this one or that one. Mm -hmm. Or, in a control condition, they looked at and thought about all the same products and made ratings of them, but they did not make choices. So they had all the same stuff go through their mind, they just chose or not. Uh, and then we gave them a classic laboratory test of self-control, which is how long can you hold your hand in ice water? Because it's cold, it's unpleasant, you feel like pulling it out, and so you need mind over matter to keep, keep going uh, in there. The people who had made the decisions, they quit in half the time. It, it, took, uh, it took half uh, their, their stamina away. So making those decisions took something out of them that they didn't then have to make them continue uh, holding that hand in ice water. So it's like we have this finite amount of something, yes, and then you can spend it yes. on these other, these other these things that seemingly have no relationship to each other, but you're saying right. there's a common source. There's a common source. Now, is this common source just like pure energy? So if I was you know, going to run a mile, the same thing, or, was it, or, or is it some kind of a mental energy? Well, uh, that's currently uh, being researched. Uh, uh, I think it is, it's tied into the body's uh, energy supply. Uh, so we find some connections with the, you know, glucose is a chemical in your bloodstream mm -hmm. that carries energy around and uh, we have some studies finding that uh, the glucose in the you know, lower glucose levels in your bloodstream after self-control or after making decisions. If we give people a dose of uh, glucose uh, to replenish that, then their, their self-control performance uh, turns out uh, mm. better again. Mm. Even their rational thinking uh, improves. Uh, after a dose of glucose, but only if they've already depleted it right. uh, in another task. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the, the magic formula to get smarter and smarter. You, you uh, know. Right, no, there's, <laughs> there's an upper limit, uh, yeah. but uh, when you're below that limit, you can't do as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tied into even things like when your immune system uh, is working hard, fighting off a cold or uh, dealing with an injury, uh, then you have less energy for self-control, your thinking is not as good, mm. uh, and, and so forth. We found uh, uh, in some of our studies, after people will do an arbitrary self-control task, uh, you know, say maybe watching a comedy and trying not to laugh or trying to shut some thought out of their mind that we've planted in there, mm. uh, they perform worse even on simple intelligence tests that uh, 
a lot of thinking requires you to manipulate concepts and uh, reason from one thing to another. Uh, and that takes effort and takes control by the self that uh, gets worse once the energy is depleted. Mm -hmm. So there is something uh, psychologically and physiologically real in terms of the uh, the energy that goes into these things. That said, the difference, uh, self-control and planning, uh, initiative, uh, rational choice, these are different manifestations, I think, of the of the same phenomenon. Uh, and how does that phenomenon, that, that core phenomenon, relate to free will? Is, is free will uh, part of that? Is it part of free will? Or is free will, again, this magic uh, uh, construct that we create that that really is just uh, some words that we've put around a, a constellation of things that has no real substance. Well, there are many definitions of free will, and, and people get quite uh, persnickety and ornery <laughs> if you use a definition that they don't agree with. Uh, so opinions are strong. My goal is to understand what the real process is and what people can do and what we do that's different from mm -hmm. other, other animals. So to me, I'm studying the real phenomenon. Whether it qualifies free will, I mean, some people will say free will means that you have a soul and that causes it. Well, I, I got nothing to do with that. <laughs> uh, other people say it's uh, the ability to do one thing or do something else. And well, that does uh, does fit our yeah. uh, our data and that seems to go with the essence of it. So, so, so is it fair to ask you what your definition is of free will? Uh, I suppose it's fair. Um, okay, I think of free will uh, as an advanced... Uh, oh. Depending on who I'm talking to, uh, I have to respect the different definitions. I mean, as you know, uh, Christian religion boosted the idea of free will to resolve a theological problem of how can God send people to hell when he created <laughs> them. And, uh, and so well, he created them with the freedom to do what they wanted, right. so if they screw up, he can send them to hell. Uh, that's been influential, but that's certainly not the only, uh, the only source of it. Um, I understand uh, free will is the capacity to do different things. Uh, it depends on probably consciously being able to understand that there are multiple possibilities in the environment. Uh, and then it's an evolved process to make yourself do what's better in the long run or better for your integration with society rather than doing what you most most feel like doing at the time. Uh, to live in our in civilized society, you have to overcome your animal impulses and uh, you know, and follow the rules of the group. And people do this quite a bit. Uh, I just have a, a recent study tracking people and their, their daily desires. And people spend several hours a day resisting uh, various desires that come to them. We can't just go and act on every impulse. That's also why we couldn't just uh, say hire a gorilla or a leopard or any other kind of animal and integrate them into our society. It doesn't have the psychological capacity uh, to understand our rules and, and even do, could, did understand them to subject uh, its behavior uh, to resist the impulses and, 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 and control and do what, what isn't right and necessary. So we have that advanced capacity uh, to behave in culturally valued ways, even if it's not what we feel like doing. And, and that, I think, is, is the key to free will. Uh, another related point, people think of free will as being able to do whatever you want with no rules, but any animal out in the woods can do what it wants with no rules. What you need free will for uh, is to pursue your enlightened self-interest in the context of a society that has all these rules. So it sounds ironic to say free will is for following rules, mm -hmm. but that's what's produced the great success of the human race. Culture only works uh, if people kind of go along with it and follow its norms and rules and prescriptions. Uh, and then as a system, it makes life better for everybody.